Hello everyone. In today's video, we're diving into the world of federated learning. It's a groundbreaking approach, really, that allows multiple devices to collaboratively train machine learning models without compromising the privacy of individual data. So if you're ready to explore how collaborative intelligence and privacy preservation go hand in hand, let's get started. First, understanding federated learning. Federated learning flips the traditional machine learning paradigm on its head. Instead of sending data to a central server, the model is brought to the data. Let's break it down. In a typical machine learning setting, data from various sources is collected, centralized and analyzed on a central server. However, with federated learning, the learning process is decentralized and happens locally on each device or edge node. These devices collaborate to train a shared model, while the individual data remains secure and private. Let's now look at how federated learning works. Now that we have a grasp on the concept, let's dive deeper into how federated learning actually works. Here's a step-by-step -step breakdown. I will cover the steps now and I will present them each individually in the following. We have model initialization, distribution to local devices, local model training, model aggregation, and step five, which is not really an unknown step, but this whole thing is an iterative process. Before we start with the first step of model initialization, there is basically a step zero where we start off, which is the untrained model. Now to the first step, model initialization. The process begins with initializing a global model typically based on a pre-trained model or a predefined architecture. This model serves as the starting point for federated learning. Next, we have the distribution to the local devices. The global model is then distributed to a fleet of local devices or edge nodes, such as smartphones, IoT devices, or even servers in different locations. Note that in this case, I have pictured a couple of smartphones, but it could be like around 100, 200 uh, devices which are chosen at random. Each device possesses its own local dataset, which represents a unique perspective of the overall data distribution. Imagine a scenario where a company wants to improve its personalized recommendation system. The global model is initially deployed to thousands of smartphones, each with its own user data. This enables the model to learn from individual user behaviors while maintaining their privacy. Next step, local model training. On each local device, the global model is trained using the respective device's local data. The training process takes place locally without transmitting raw data to the central server or exposing individual data points. In our recommendation system example, each smartphone trains the global model using the user's interactions with the device. This means that each user's data is kept private and secure on their device, never leaving the device itself. The fourth and Actually, final step is model aggregation. After local training, the updated models from all the devices are sent back to the central server or aggregator for model aggregation. So back to our scenario, the smartphones send their locally trained models back to the central server, which aggregates the model's updates to create a new and improved global model. This process ensures that the knowledge gained from individual devices is pooled together without exposing any private data. As I've said, this whole thing, and basically the fifth step, is that it's an iterative process. The process of local training and model aggregation is repeated iteratively. With each iteration, the global model becomes more refined and accurate while preserving privacy. Next, we look at some real-world applications of federated learning. So now that we understand how it works, let's explore some practical application where this approach shines. The first example is healthcare research. Federated learning enables collaboration among healthcare institutions while preserving patient privacy. Multiple hospitals can jointly train models to improve disease, diagnosis, or predict treatment outcomes without sharing patients' sensitive medical rec records. Next, personalized AI assistance. With federated learning, AI assistants can learn from individual user interactions while protecting personal data. Each user's device trains the model, ensuring that recommendations and responses are tailored to their preferences without compromising their privacy. 
Third and final example, traffic prediction. In the realm of smart cities, federated learning can be employed to predict traffic patterns by utilizing data from various sensors and vehicles. The models are trained collaboratively, ensuring privacy and enabling accurate predictions without compromising individual vehicle data. Finally, we come to advantages and challenges of federated learning. Like any technology, federated learning has its pros and cons. Let's explore them briefly. Advantages Privacy preservation so, federated learning allows for data training without sharing raw, personally identifiable information. Enhanced security. Data remains on the local devices, reducing the risks of data breaches during transmission. Improved efficiency. Training on local devices reduces network bandwidth requirements and minimizes latency. Some challenges. We have uh, the problem of heterogeneity. Dealing with diverse devices and data distributions require careful model aggregation techniques. Then we have the communication overhead. Coordinating updates between devices can introduce additional communication overhead. Finally, we can have a data imbalance. Local datasets may have varying sizes and distributions requiring strategies to handle data imbalance during training. To conclude, there you have it, the in and outs of federated learning. We explored its working mechanisms, real-world applications and discussed pros and cons. Federated learning offers a groundbreaking solution for collaborative machine learning while preserving individual privacy. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with others. And be sure to subscribe to the channel for more exciting content on emerging technologies. Until next time, keep exploring and embracing the possibilities that technology brings and stay secure.